Okay, now it's time to talk about operators. Um, so, we discussed briefly an example of operator where we said, let's say for example in Euclidean space, if you have a two-dimensional, let's say it's two-dimensional, you have some vector ax, a y then if you apply a rotation of some degrees if you rotate it then you can always apply and you can write this as some rotation matrix followed which is operating on a x a y and then actually you can take a dot product with another vector and then it will become nice Euclidean, so we are not really worried about complex conjugate. Just for the sake of understanding, this is how we like. Okay, let me change the color. So, standard procedure and um, uh, with complex, um, with with these as complex functions, then um, things will change, become complex conjugate, and it's not just. I mean, there will be more involving cases other than rotation matrix itself. But this is certainly a sample example. <clears throat> so, a linear operator. Let's let's talk about linear operator. So what is a linear operator? These are, these are various types of operators we're going to discuss. For example, if you have an operator, let me make a heading here. Linear operator. If you have something like A, A is some, some number. Then all a near linear operator will do will be simply this B phi. Okay. Um, we are going to discuss something called adjoint of an operator or adjoint operator. Which is symbol as like. Now here we saw that all we did was we have a vector b, we had a vector a, we made a rotation so that vector a moved here, and then we took a dot product of these two. Um, we can do just the opposite. We can instead of rotating A to this case and then taking a dot product, we can rotate B from here to here and then take a dot product. And in both the cases, we will have the same results. The only difference is that the rotation matrix from here to here, O, will not be the same as rotation matrix from here to here. Let's call this. Okay. So, which basically means a joint of an operator is written as phi a psi equals so this is an operation that produces equivalent um, dot product or inner product and um, and we have we know so this is what the adjoint of an operator A is. Also, we there's within these adjoint operator there is there are certain types of operators which are called Hermitian operators, and they satisfy the following condition. Well, when we write like this, which basically means A is operating on Psi. And we can write this as A Phi. Now here it means A is operating on Phi instead of Psi. So that's the way of writing. 
this is just either there are two of these lines or there's just one line this is the way we have chosen to write and we can see in if for this particular case that joint of the operator is same as the operator itself and these kind of operators are called uh, um, Hermitian operators uh, one for some of the few properties which can um, we can derive right away that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real. We'll talk about this later but just for the sake of telling you. Um, and that's it actually. Uh, if I tell more, I'll certainly confuse you. But right now, these are the basic two. Linear, we discussed about linear operator and we discussed about um, a uh, Hermitian operator or a joint of an operator. Let's call this number one because in the next class, we'll talk about isometric and unitary operator.